Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Databases and SQL video tutorial series. This is lesson number 12, and now we're jumping into the topic of relationships. And uh, obviously this lesson is going to be about the one-to-many relationship, so let's dive right into it. So what you're going to learn today is uh, all about the real-world examples of the one-to-many relationships. Um, you're going to learn about uh, what a one-to-many relationship looks like in a database, how to identify which table is the one side and which table is the many side of the relationship, and as well as how to identify uh, the parent and the child tables in the one-to-many relationship. So, plenty to learn today. Let's get to it. So, this one's all about relationship and normalization. So, as you are well uh, now well versed on the topic of normalization from the last video, hopefully uh, you were able to fully grasp all those concepts, uh, you know that breaking tables up is a good thing. Okay, we break them up into smaller tables. That's what normalization is all about to avoid those anomalies. But if we have uh, one larger table that we break up into two smaller tables, uh, we still need to know how the information in both tables will relate to each other. Okay, because when you do break up the, the information between the two tables, or rather between one table and the two, um, there has to be some sort of relationship there because the data previously existed in the one table and now it's two so there must be some kind of relationship so as you've learned this this is called a relationship and it's via something called a foreign key so what you may not know is that there are three main ways to create relationships one to one one to many and many to many so obviously in this lesson we're going to be focusing on the one to many relationship so let's get to it now, this is one of the most common types of relationships, uh, as it really can be seen almost everywhere. So, the one-to-many relationship is mo one of the most common of the three, at least uh, from my uh, point of view, from what I've used in my professional career, the one-to-many is the one that shows up probably the most. Um, so, you know, examples of, the, of this relationship include employer to employees. Okay, so there's one employer that points to many employees. There's people to addresses, so a person can hold many addresses, so one person, many addresses, one employer, many employees. Uh, I don't know, computers to files, there's one computer that can hold many files. Uh, library to books, there's one library that can hold many books, you get the idea. And you can see in this lovely diagram over here to the right, you see this one-to-many relationship, uh, exactly how it uh, looks in real life. So the key thing to note here is how this relationship actually functions. Okay, like I said, one employer is related to many employees, but any given employee can be tracked back to one employer. So this can be really, um, you know, pointed out in this diagram. If this is our one employer, you can be tagged or tracked back to many employees. Okay, this one person is pointing to one, two, three, four, five different people. So one employer to many employees. But if you were to take a, a sampling of one of those employees, so it's, let's see, say you take this person, this person can only be tracked back to one employer. Okay, this is a key concept that you need to understand. If an, em if an employee, so if an employee could relate back to many employers, so not just one, but many, then we would have a different kind of relationship. But because this one points back to just one employer, let's assume this guy's the employer, um, then that's what exactly the relationship we have, a one-to-many relationship. So how do we create this one-to-many relationship in a database setting? So believe it or not, the three different uh, uh, relationships that we're going to be talking about, uh, each of them has a unique way to actually be mapped out in a database setting. They each have their own design in a database setting, okay? So for this particular one, the one-to-many relationship, how do we figure out and how do we create this one-to-many relationship? So the first step is to identify the two tables that are involved in this particular relationship, okay? There's always going to be two tables involved in one specific relationship. Okay, so in our example, let's use the employer to employees relationship. That was the first one I mentioned, and that's the one I've sort of been talking about in the past slide, so we might as well actually map that one out. So here's what the employer and employee tables could look like uh, if they are very simplistic. So I've created some very simplistic tables. So we have the employer table here, which has an employer ID and an employer name. Okay, that's all it needs to hold. The employee table has an employee ID an employer ID, which is a foreign key that points back to the employer table, as well as an employee name. Okay, so this design is exactly how you map out a one-to-many relationship. 
the next important thing to do uh, when creating this relationship in a database is to identify which table represents the one side of the relationship and which table is the many side. Okay, so since one employer points to many employees, it's quite easy to identify which is which, right? So we can so we know this. I mean, we said there's one employer and many employees. So since we know this, we can establish the concept of a parent and child table. So the employer table is the parent table because it's the, the one side of the relationship. And the employee is the child end of the relationship which is the many side of the relationship. And this is universally true with all one to many relationships. Um, knowing this parent and child relationship, we can move on to our last step. But before I move on, I wanna get a little bit more detailed into the actual design of this database, which I actually didn't write up. Uh, but I just wanna make sure you guys are clear on how this, this actually works. So you've seen this before. I've already done uh, some of my previous, previous examples, especially in the last uh, slide, or not slide, last lesson, where I was talking about normalization. This is just how we had our relationship set up. And you might, so therefore you might think that this is not very uh, different from what you've already seen, but the relationships that I established in the past uh, lessons were all implementing the one-to-many relationship pattern. Okay, so it's very important to understand how this relationship works out. So we have, like you see here, we have the foreign key, which is the employer ID, which exists in the child table. So the employer ID is here um, in, in the child table, and it exists as a separate entity to the table's primary key. Okay, so the employee table has its own employee ID, but it also holds the employer ID. Okay, that's very important to understand because when we go further, when we talk about the one-to-one -one relationship, uh, these two keys are actually going to be combined into one key. Now, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself with explaining that, but I just want you to understand that this is um, a very specific way to uh, create a relationship. Okay, this is a one-to-many way to create a relationship. Now, can you see how this could turn into a one-to-many, how this could create one-to-many data points in your database? So we could have, let's say we have one employer. So we have an employer ID, let's say one. Okay, or let's say 100, just to be a little bit crazy. So let's say employer ID is 100. The employer name is, let's say, I don't know, Google. Okay, so now we have employees. And over here, we, we, need, to, um, we need to abide by all the rules of the relational database management system. Okay, in this case, it's MySQL. So we need to uh, um, um, abide by their rules. So how do we abide by their rules? Well, we can insert, let's say we insert an employee. Let's say the employee ID is 1000. Okay, and the employee name is, I don't know, let's use me, Trevor Page. And then we need to put in an employer ID that exists in the employer table. So it'll be 100. Okay, so we have employee ID 1000 points to employer ID 100, and we can have employee name Trevor Page. But then we can insert another employee. So we can have employee ID 1001. It can point back to employer ID 100, and the employee name could be John Doe and so on and so forth. We can keep adding employees into this table and they can all point back to the employer ID of 100 and there are, you know, relationship is satisfied. That means we will have one employer that points to many employees. And now we can keep on adding employers and employees um, and they all will abide by this rule. Okay, so the important thing to note here is that there's no way for us to have one employee that points back to more than one employer. Because remember I said back in that example with the graphic, I had said that that would be a completely different type of relationship. Well, given this database schema, there is no way that we can assign more than one employer to any one employee, which means that our one-to-many relationship, the design of it, will remain intact and it will remain valid. Okay, that is the specific reason why we use this specific design, this specific setup for the one to many relationship. Now, like I said, the child side of the relationship, we talked about parent and child. Parent is the side of the, of the relationship that is the one side. So the employer is the one side and the many side of the relationship is the child side. So the child side of the relationship always holds the foreign key of the parent. Okay, so like I said, the employer ID, this is always the case for the one-to-many relationships. So this is why we have an employer ID in the employee table. This is a universal format for all one-to-many relationships in all databases, okay? Remember that, you always will have the foreign key 
of the parent table inside of the child table whenever you're dealing with a one-to-many relationship. And the child end of the, of the relationship, the child table, will have its own primary key, separate to the foreign key. Okay, that's sort of, that is also a universal truth when you're talking about a one-to-many relationship. Okay, so now once you go through, and in the next lesson we'll talk about how to create the one-to-one -one relationship, but once you um, have seen this, and once you see all the other relationships, you'll be able to get a clear picture of how all of these relationships actually get mapped out in the database structure, in the database schema, okay? It might be a little bit confusing now, because all you see is one example, but yes, like I said, I promise it will get much easier once you've seen all three of the kinds of relationships. So, let's move on to the next lesson.